Welcome to Rust Trading Economics. My name is Rocco, I'm your guide. Let's get started. You want to raid someone because they killed you. You don't even know what tools or weapons to use. If you're a more experienced player and you know the methods, you still find yourself wondering how much something gonna cost to raid. In this series, I'm going to show you raiding techniques in Rust and especially their financial side. We are gonna go through the best methods for each building part how to rate them and how much it is going to cost you to do that. In the last episode we talked about all the turrets and traps in Rust. If you didn't watch the previous episodes of the series, you should check them out as well, the links are in the description. Now you all know how to raid an average base through any type of doors and bring down all types of building blocks, break into compounds, avoid or destroy all the traps and even raid metal shop fronts if necessary. In this 14th episode called Deployables Part 1, we will talk about some items that can help you in your early raid defense. Let me define this a little bit more since there's a lot of items in the game that fits into this category. In this video specifically we will talk about four items, the furnace, the locker, the large rechargeable battery and the workbench level 2. The reason for this is that all of these items can help you during a raid defense and also you want to know how to get rid of these items if they come across you whilst raiding. People overlook these items in Rust and do not use them when they are defending their base but it's a mistake because they can save your life and base in the early mid game. The key in every raid defense is to buy more time for yourself so that other parties can come to counter and you can seal a breach in that time or you simply need that extra few seconds to craft yourself another door and maybe the raiders run out of explosives. Either way, I'm going to show you an example which will make sense for all of these items. First, let's see why I only want to talk about these items. You could say that the workbench level 3 sits with these just fine. Yes, that is true, but I would like to point out that more than likely your base at a time when these are actually will help your defense will be a 2x2 two two with an airlock or something very similar, and not a big compound. Most likely you won't have a workbench level 3 yet, and when you will have it, you're most likely already sitting in a big base that they will just rocket raid. You are in your 2x2, two two, just moved in an hour ago, and the clan next door just noticed it, so they want to evict you. Seeing the size of your base, they are coming to raid you right away, and they go for the doors. It's early vibe, they are not that rich, they have semis and satchels. They blast both of your doors and pretty much it will be raid end soon. But you can pick up these deployables from inside your base and put them into their way to block them, whilst you figure out your next move. Stall them as much as you possibly can, if you get a kill over it, maybe you can get your next set of doors down and they could run out of explosives. Let's go to the test ground and I'll show you all the options you have to destroy each of these deployable items. First, we are going to take a look at the furnace, which is an item that you will always have in your base within the first half hour of establishing it. You can easily get rid of one, but it could still buy you a little bit of time. If you go melee, you can use two wooden spears, which only costs you 600 wood, one sword, which costs you 15 metal fragments and one metal blade, one hatchet, which costs you 75 metal fragments and 100 wood, or a jackhammer. If you have loads of explosives and want to get rid of it even faster, you can use one satchel charge, which costs you one rope, 10 cloth, 80 metal fragments, 480 sulfur, and 720 charcoal. Next item is the locker. Usually you will have this later in your wipe, but you can always find it randomly from a box, and if you do, Place it in front of your door and it blocks the entire opening without a gap. The method destroying one is exactly like breaking down a furnace. Two wooden spears, one sword, one hatchet or jackhammer if you choose melee and one satchel charge if you go explosives. 
Later in time, when you already have a large rechargeable battery, you should definitely pick it up and replace it into a blown doorway to buy time, since it has even more health than the first two items on the list and it will buy you much more time. Trying to destroy it melee is not a real option. The only way you can get rid of it using a jackhammer and even then it takes 11 refills, so they either have access to your workbench or they brought their own level 1, which means that they have to go outside every time. This buys you at least 3 minutes in your defense. Destroying it with explosives is the best way to get rid of it. I recommend using two satchel charges, which costs you 2 ropes, 20 cloth, 160 metal fragments, 960 sulfur and 1440 charcoal or 35 explosive 556 ammo which costs 175 metal fragments 875 sulfur and 1050 charcoal finally we have the workbench level 2 which you can build quickly after a few monuments run this is the toughest item on the list and you can only destroy it with explosives the fastest method is to use one C4 on it, which costs you 2 tag trash, 5 cloth, 200 metal fragments, 60 low grade fuel, 2200 sulfur and 3000 charcoal. The most cost effective way is to use two incendiary rockets, which costs you 4 metal pipes, 506 low grade fuel, 20 metal fragments, 1220 sulfur and 1800 charcoal. But it burns for quite some time and you have to be precise with the shots and the fire spreads randomly, so destroying it in a base will be very different than destroying it here on the test ground. To sum up, here's a table of all the shown methods and total costs calculated. Now you know how to deal with some of the deployables in Rust. In the next episode, Deployables Part 2, we will discuss items such as barbecues, small and large boxes, metal shelves, vending machines and the workbench level 3. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments down below or during my live stream. All my links are in the description. Stay tuned. I hope this video will be useful for new and experienced players as well, that it will serve as a guideline when calculating the raid materials. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.